what would you suggest for someone that's new that wants to get started collecting, flipping, investing, buying, selling, whatever it may be? What are some steps you think those people you would suggest to them? Because it was all suggestions, right? We have our opinions. What would you suggest to them, how they should start, and maybe some things they should think about? Well, here's here's my weird uh, recommendation. You know, I would buy a product. Um, if, if, if I was talking to, let's say, somebody who's into basketball, I would straight up say, go check out 2017-18 Panini Status Basketball. You got Jason Tatum rookies. You got Donovan Mitchell rookies. You've got really cool low numbered cards. You've got cool autograph cards. You've got some very rare Kobe cards you can pull out of there. And those boxes go for about 150 bucks. So it's not like it's, you know, burning a hole in anybody's wallet. Uh, so go, you know, if you think you might like basketball cards, go check out this product, this 2017-18 uh, status. And then open the product, you know, enjoy the experience, go on Cardboard Connection, read about how the product is configured about all the different things you can pull and then see what you actually do pull and, and, and see what the discrepancy is there. And then once you've got, once you've pulled this product and you've opened up this product, okay, that's step one of the experience. Now, you know, you've opened up a box of something. That's a, that's an important part of the collector introduction. That's an important part of the experience. Now here's a different part of the experience. Now take every card that you pulled out of that box, take all of them and go to eBay and sell them. And maybe you want to sell some by auction. Maybe you want to sell some by fixed price, you know, but go and sell all those cards. And in so doing, you're going to learn so much about how the hobby works. You're going to learn about, you know, how people price cards. You're going to learn about comps. You're going to learn about how auctions work. You're going to learn about shipping and in, in making sure you get your butt to the USPS in a timely fashion so that you get good feedback from the people that you're selling to, you're going to meet people. You're going to, you're going to build relationships and meet people along the way who are buying these cards. And then you're going to say, what are you buying this card for? They say, Oh, I'm completing my set. I'm completing the 2017, 18 penny status basketball. So they say, Oh, set collecting. What's that? And then all of a sudden you're down a different rabbit hole. And then finally get a social media account. And I know that's, that's one of the scariest and the hardest parts is like a lot of people who are in the hobby are introverted and, they don't really mm -hmm. like to have big personalities and comments on things or, but, but get a social media account and just post cards, you know, go follow people who have similar interests that, that, that you have check out the hashtags, you know, try and find and, and get an overlap and build a little community, maybe message a couple of people and start, see if you can kind of build a friendship with some people because the community aspect of this hobby, finding people who like the same things that we like and then sharing that commonality with them and, and getting to know them better is, is also one of the best parts of this hobby. And then finally, you know, live the experience. Go to your local card shop, support your local card shop, go to the local shows, meet the dealers there, say hello, you know, let people sort of get to know you. Let don't be afraid to tell people what you like to collect. And if you ever need an icebreaker, it's so simple. It's it's the same question that you just asked me. Uh, at the very beginning of the show, everybody at a show, everybody at a shop, they collect something. So just if you ever are, are at a loss for what to say, just just ask somebody, what do you collect? It's as simple as that. And you can start maybe just a brief conversation or maybe you end up you know, making a lifelong friend out of it. I agree. I totally agree. So uh, w one more question here. Well, let's talk some data right quick, right? Yes. So I know we, people talk about the market is down, mm. right? I always look at two things, the market overall, and then I like to pull out a subset of kind of goat-like elite players. How do those trends over the, the last six months, 13 months compare when you look at the total market and you look at Kevin Garnett, uh, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, LeBron James, we can start naming some players. How does that compare? It's a mixed bag. It's a very mixed bag. So, one guy whose market is fascinating to me is Tom Brady because over the last six months, so in card ladder, we have player indexes for, you know, maybe about 2000 different players or so. Okay. And they're comprised of some number of cards. The Tom Brady index has several hundred cards at least. 
Um, Lear, let me, I'll, I'll tell you exactly how many cards the Tom Brady index has. Our Tom Brady index and card letter has 469 Tom Brady cards, which is quite a bit. But here's what's so fascinating about Brady. So Brady cards over the last two years have increased more than seven times in value, according to the index. The index is up 650%, which translates to about a 7.5 X increase in value. Which is staggering, which is staggering. Which, yeah. But over the last six months, so like we just talked about two years, 24 mm -hmm. months. Mm -hmm. Let me get in picture, 24 months. Yeah. But if you if you cut off 18 of those months and you just look at the last six, Brady's market is only up four percent. And it's been through something of a roller coaster ride where it 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 Brady's market peaked in late February, according to the card letter index. And then it's come down quite a bit since then, such that over the last six months, you know, because six months ago was November. That was, you know, the second full month of the NFL season. You know, it, it only 4% growth since then. That kind of tells the story of the hobby that that there was, you know, uh, once again, we, we kind of go through these ebbs and flows. We get overly excited. We get overly pessimistic. And we just kind of go back and forth in those directions, it feels like. And there was a period of great exuberance in the Tom Brady market there in, in January and the February range. And now it's cooled off quite a bit, which is to be expected, you know, but, but not everybody is following that trajectory. So even though, you know, guys like Tom Brady, Steph Curry, their markets were absolutely on fire, you know, leading up until earlier this year, those guys have cooled off and, and their markets have calmed down quite a bit. But, you know, you look around at other categories of the hobby, you look at what's you know, hot right now, for example, even in traditional categories like basketball, Jordan Poole's market is up more than 2x. It's up 119% over the last six months. We can we can go and we can dig and we can find, you know, different categories. Michael Jordan, for example, his market is up 13% over the last year. You know, that's more of a tried and true. One of the segments of the hobby that's absolutely thriving right now, but there's not a lot of content being made about it. But one of the segments of this hobby that's thriving is vintage baseball. Willie Mays, in particular, Jackie Robinson, Mickey Mantle, Babe Ruth. These guys' markets over the last six months, you know, over the same time span that Brady's up 4%, these guys' markets are up 50 60 70%. If you look over the last year, these guys' market indexes are up 2x, 3x. It's, uh, it's, it's remarkable how quietly but profoundly the vintage baseball market is thriving right now. Essentially, that, that should be, um, it's not really a surprise to me, but uh, it's interesting when you don't hear people talking about vintage that much. I'm not mad about it. I think yeah. it's pretty neat. I'm not, you know, I think it's pretty neat that that market is able to thrive. And what do you know? Maybe not, not, not but a handful of pieces of content have ever discussed it. 